Hi, people. I'm back. Got a lot of things to talk to you about today. Some of it just rehashing some of the old stuff, but I need to keep it all in mind. Uh, first of all, I'd like for you all to say a little prayer for uh, Anita Bryant. She's in our community. She has her own clan down in Alabama. She's been sick, and uh, all the help you can give her would be good. Give her best wishes, prayers, or whatever you like. Uh, the next thing I was going to bring up was it's got to do with Lenita Bryant. And that is, I have clans in Ohio. I have a clan in Ohio. I have a clan in Lebanon, Tennessee. I have a clan in Gatlinburg that introduced themselves to me, but I haven't really went up and met yet. But they did come down and introduce themselves to me right in the streets of Gatlinburg. And those clans I know, I've been there, they know I know them. Lenita Bryant, I've never met her clan. I think I've told you all this before, but it goes to something else. Me and her were talking, we, we, stay, we communicate a little bit, and <clears throat> she asked her clan quite a while back if they knew who I was. And they told, you know, they gave her the yes. So I thought that was kind of cute. Then I wonder, how do they know me? So, okay. Well, then later, Lanita was in her, in her dining room, living by where she was, but she was watching me on her TV. And she was watching my videos, and she heard stuff on her back porch. And she's wondering what it was, and it, it was one of the foots. They come around her side window and was watching me on her TV with her. I thought that was really cute. Uh, but anyway, at that point in time, thoughts are going through my head. How far do their communications go? It's got to be the foots from up here contacting the foots in Alabama. So I'm trying to figure out how... They communicate so far and what frivolous things or non-frivolous things they communicate about. So I'm wondering about that. Well, this week, I think it was the 7th or something. I forget what date it was. I'd have to look it up. I got an email from a lady and uh, her name was Judith. And she emailed me and said that her clan... Her boys and girls, as she calls them, her boys and girls, suggested that she get a hold of me. Okay. That's kind of like what Lenita Bryant's got, oh, except for one little thing. She's in the UK. Judith is in the United Kingdom over there, across the pond. So as my wondering went on, how far does this communication go? I got my answer. Bingo. So they communicate all over the world, evidently. But somehow I'm popular because I do things for them. I'm trying to make people understand them. So anyway, me and Judith are in contact. We've done got a few emails together. We're working on getting the telephone conversation going. I worked on that for a little bit before I did this. I think I got a Zoom thing hooked up. She suggested that, so I tried it. We'll see what happens. I have, uh, I'm going to try to get that WhatsApp going, too, for the telephone, I guess. I started to punch it all into my phone, my arthritic hands. I hit hit the wrong number, screwed it up, and I couldn't get back to where I had to go, so I'll have to try something else. I'll get it straightened out, I guess. But anyway, that answered my question. How do they communicate all over like that? Well, they do. It's all telepathic. Now, most of you out here have been followers from Steve's show, How to Hunt. Some of you heart. Some of my new ones haven't. So I suggest you new ones go to How to Hunt and uh, see what Steve has to say. He has a lot of good people out there that contact him and stuff like that. Sometimes I'm not happy with Steve, but that's little difference of opinion on things but anyway 
I would love to get on his show and tell him things, but I just don't know how to do that. But anyway, he has a show he put out on one of his programs. He talks about Edgar. Edgar is a nuclear scientist or physicist or whatever he is. And the reason he contacted Steve, what got him involved in it, I believe, is in these nuclear power plants, there's been a lot of the Bigfoot showing up, jumping the fences, getting their faces up in the, in the cameras, and letting them people know they're there. So consequently, he ended up talking to Steve about it. And he's done a lot of communicating with Steve. Tells him a lot. Now, I will tell you this, like I tell everybody, if you don't live with a Bigfoot, you don't know the Bigfoot. Excuse me, the first people. Hard to break that habit, ain't it? Anyway, you have all this trouble going on over in Ukraine. Yes, I went over this, I think, in the last video. All this going on in Ukraine. Edgar goes over there and takes care of the uh, nuclear power plant. It would seem to be a problem. And then he got detoured over into Russia with some other people. And, whatever, and finally, he got around to where these Russian people that talked to the foots, know the foots, and they took him, took this guy, took Edgar to the to the Bigfoot to talk to him. And they told him a lot of things. Now, what I want you to understand is, I want all of you to look, watch that video. It's called, uh, uh, let's see. This one you have, this one you should see and share. That's the one where Steve talks about Edgar, his whole video. Well, the Foots told him a lot of stuff over there. And it's quite funny to me. All the stuff the Foots told him, I said months ago, years ago, I'm telling you things, years before that, the Foots let me know. Uh, right down to the point, and Steve had mentioned it later, people. Uh, they told Edgar that's what they're called, the people. Something, something that I don't know how that came out of his mouth, but they're the people, which I've been trying to correct the first people for. I've known about that for years. I just never put it out till about a year ago. It was last October. I put it out. No more Sasquatch, no more Bigfoot. First people. So as Edgar goes over here this last month or so, the foot's told him we're people. So, like I said, Thanks, Steve, for verifying all that. Now, I didn't get into a whole lot of detail on it, but I will tell you some things. Revert, re, reverts right back to me and mine. I told you people one time, I don't know what video it is, because I don't, I'm not, I ain't got time to go back and look at all of it, but one of my videos, I tell a story of how me and Sharon was walking up my driveway, over 100 degree weather, Walking up the driveway, sweat pouring off of us. And I looked at Sharon and I said, Sharon, how do our friends put up with this with all that hair? And we automatically was walking in an air-conditioned bubble. We flipped out. Like, what the hell? We flipped out. The foots must have been in the area. They had heard me. They put us in an air-conditioned bubble. We walked up to the house in an air-conditioned bubble all the way up the driveway. Well, it seems like Edgar got to experience that. I guess there was a touch of an arm and the guy the foot turned himself hot and cold and stuff in an instant. That's how they do this. That's why they go around with no clothes. It doesn't bother them. In the midst of winter, it doesn't bother them. They repel all that. And I don't know how they do it. I know I've experienced it years ago. And I've told you people about it. So, when these things come up, I love it because, you know, things I say, I cannot verify. All I can tell you is, I'll take a polygraph test. I have no way of verifying what I say. But when Edgar come up talking all this, it verified much of what I say. Uh, Edgar speaks of the alien orientation, orientation with the foots. It's the aliens. 
you have to go watch Steve's video. If you ain't watched it, go watch it. This one you have to see and share. Go back and watch it and look at it real close. I had to go back over to pick some of the things out. There's like, oh, there's more I can't even think of them right now, but that was one of the crucial ones that, that I walked in an air-conditioned bubble and the foots put me there years ago. This is, this is my relationship with them. I don't have a normal relationship like we're going to get into the other in a minute. But anyway, Edgar said he, they, they give him a book with a lot of information in it or arrange for him to get a book or something with a lot of information in it. And he got that and he's supposed to bring more of that out to Steve. Now, they did give him one little, one little, uh, how do you say it? They asked him a question, how long they've been there? And I think the answer was as long as you have. Well, I don't think that's quite right, but that is an evasive answer. This is what one thing, when you ask the foots questions, they might not tell you what you want to hear. They might not tell you the truth. That sounded a little evasive to me because I know a little bit about how long they've been here. And the uh, thing of that is, well, I don't ask him questions for the fact, in my mind, it's disrespectful. Someone of their caliber, of their being, I got no business questioning. Nobody else does. But they offered some stuff for Edgar, the scientist. They offered him some stuff for all the questions the scientists would want to know they've answered questions for, supposedly, in this book. And that's good. That's really good. Uh, I go along with the fact that there's good and bad foots. They admit that, too. Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, anyway, if you haven't watched all of my videos, please watch them. All my videos add up to the fact of where I stand with first people. They've taken me in a lot. I'm known throughout the Bigfoot Society, the First People Society. And that to me, I'm I'm thrilled. When, when Judith got a hold of me about her her boys and girls suggested that she gets a hold of me. I'm just thrilled about that. I'm, I worked on a uh, Zoom line this morning, and I'm going to work on a Watts line. And uh, I'm going to try to have com communication with her. She just sent me a recording. And I'll be honest with you. She's from over there in Britain or wherever she's from, and I know they have accents. I also have poor ears. So I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get hooked up talking to this lady, and I won't be able to understand nothing she says. I mean... I lived in America all my life, and there's people in America with accents from down south that I, I can't tell what they're saying. I have to, huh, what? It's my, it's my little hearing disability I have, which I got a hear, ear for, or hearing aids for that, just so when I'm out in the woods, I can hear the foots out there at my house. But it helps, but it's not perfect. Anyway, that stuff that comes from Edgar, it, Steve has all the faith in the world in whatever Edgar says. And like I say, my stuff's documented. Everything I say on my channel is there to stay. This is the way it is. Now, Steve had talked sometime with the indigenous people of Canada. The I don't remember what tribe it is. But they've gotten on there and explained what a person like me would have to experience to be a person like me getting the gifts, doing this, doing that. Watch my channel. I've done it all. Look back through Steve's Steve's things, wherever that's at. I couldn't find a, a title on it. But somewhere he talks about the same letter and told him all the things that somebody is tied up with the foots would have to be qualified to do. So on my channel, you'll see that I've done this all. So I love these things that verify the fact that I'm not lying about nothing. Uh, 
Patty Rowe is another one. Patty Rowe is from Lancaster, Ohio, and she wrote in a email, took up the whole show. We did the whole show with her email. And she says many things on there to verify things that I've said. But she is on the negative side of the foot of the first people. And she's, the name of that, that one is Indigenous People. Well, I can't see nothing. Knowledge of Indigenous People, Knowledge of the Sasquatch. Shared with knowing no. Anyway, indigenous people knowledge of the Sasquatch shared with I can't even read my own writing. Name is Patty Rowe. I've been trying to I've been working on looking her up, but I ain't got, got too far with it. Anyway, she it's a warning. She talks about how the Bigfoot will come to take over and, and uh, just, just take over your life. Well, that might be if you fight them. I don't know. They came to me. They openly came to me. I've been groomed for this for a long time, or it's just this little gift that I have that I was told at 68 years old. Anyway, uh, what she says is partially true, but in my case, it came to me, I went outside and met him outside my house, and jumped out there and said, hey fellas, how you doing? Glad to see you. That's just me. I don't have that fear factor in me of like, you know, whatever's out there, I'm not afraid of it, I'll deal with it. But anyway... I go out there and I talk to them and then they start coming around more and more and more every I have to go out there almost every night out to the bush and talk to them they'd be in my bush and I'd see the eye shine they let me know they was there and I knew who was there and then finally one night I got to see the one flower she was standing over by my car hall or trailer and I go out and I'm out there right, talking to them, and I, I look over in the bush. I got three or four in the bush over here, as usual, beside my, right beside my porch. And I look over, and there's one standing over there. I've never seen one stand out there before. I'd see one eye, and then I'd see two eyes, and I'd see one eye, and then two eyes. And this was a clouded night. I mean, it was clouded heavy, but it was a full moon night. How I got to see flower was... She was standing, the cloud just went away like a big spotlight on her. And I just, wow. But that was flower. That was my introduction to actually seeing one right there. But she was big. She was uh, beautiful. I mean, she, she was just, didn't look, look all that horrifying to me, but that, that's me. You know, anybody would see one of these things because there's a big, they're horrifying. But anyway, the clouds went away. And when the, cloud, the clouds went away, it took, a, took the moonlight back away. Uh, she disappeared. She's gone. I didn't see her no more. But yeah, there's an over here I'm still talking to. So that was our first really, was my first encounter with him. But that was the first time I see one. And... It was uh, quite thrilling. Now, when I introduced myself to them the first time, I went out the door and says, hey, guys, how you doing? I flat told them. I says, you guys are welcome here anytime. I, says, I understand. I don't Don't ask me how I understand this. I don't know, but it was in me. I says, guys, this land is all yours. I'm just leasing it. I'm just paying money on it. You know, I, I own it. Legally, I own it. But to them, it's their land. I think once I confirm the fact that this is their land, they're the first people, 
we gain a relationship. Now, a lot of people out there won't want to do that. This is my land. Ain't nobody getting on it. Well, you know, do what you want. But they can make life hard on you if you if you got a bad attitude toward them. I won't deny that a bit. Uh, I haven't had a bad attitude to them. We've had one little thing that I didn't like happen, and I, I'm not going to get into that. But it was it was a little minute thing. But anyway. They know how I felt and what's going on. I think it's being corrected. But for the most part, they're going to be coming out. That's what I've been telling people. This is the resolve. Some things called it in the Bible, something different. It, it's about the same thing. Sharon's informed me that this is stuff's going on in the Bible. It's all happening here. Now, I talk about this gift I have. Did not know I had a gift. I'm not a religious person. Uh, I've never thought much of religion because there's so many of them. Who's right? Who's wrong? That's not my thing to, to decipher who's right and wrong. Pick a side. No, I don't want to pick a side. I believe in God. I believe there is a God. And he usually gets things right. I can't complain about that. I mean... People have their choices whether they're going to be good or bad, and that's not on him. That's on them. I've done my bad. Now I'm trying to do some good. Uh, I'm trying to help all you people out here to understand what the foots are about. Now, I've talked about the resolve for quite a while. But we're in it right now. Now, I will talk about my gift and explain that. I'm trying to get all this done at one time because people look at my videos and forget half the stuff. So I'm going over this now, especially for the new viewers. My, uh, my gift I have was noted to me by a lady next door to my shop. She's into religion and psychic things, all this stuff. She's into very serious religion things. Uh, she came up to me after I'd bought my shop. She came up to me one day and she says, you know, you have a gift. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, like I don't even, I don't go to church. I don't know that. She says, well, you have a gift. I'll make a long story short. Anyway, dealing with the foot is a gift. Me. Uh, but that's not what she was talking about. Anyway, since she brought that up, I was over to my buddy Matt's house. Now I'm going to try to get an interview with Matt and Michelle on there sometime when I coordinate with them. And they can explain to you. Matt's into the politics really heavy on his computer. And I happened to be over there and I walked in and talked to them for a minute, few minutes. Or they live down the street from my shop. <coughs> so anyway, uh, as I'm going out the door, Justice a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit better. As I'm going out the door at Matt's house, I had the door open. I got halfway out of it, and Matt said something about the politics. And I turned around and I told him, I said, Matt, this is all going to change. There's going to be 70% of Congress is going to be gone. I said, the corruption is going to be wiped out. The corrupt will be dealt with. I don't know if it's in this order. Matt's wife, Michelle, has had to refresh my memory because I don't remember half of it. These weren't my thoughts. These were not my thoughts. These things just come out of my mouth. I said 70% of Congress is going to be gone. The military is going to come in. There's going to be tribunals. There'll be executions. Uh, they're going to use the RICO Act. Now, when I said the RICO Act, that came out of my mouth, and I got a thought in my head at the same time. They can't do that. That's for bikers and gangsters. That was my thought, not what came out of my mouth. That was my thought. And then I went on to say, uh, we're going to get a paycheck, which I hope we do, but we're supposed to get a paycheck, supposedly. Uh, God, there's other things involved I can't remember. The bottom line of it is, when all this come all this come out of my mouth, 
it's all going to be good in the end. That's the best I know. Now, this falls in with the resolve. Right now, you're watching the crops get exposed. The corruption's being exposed. There's a lot being done with that. Uh, and I think it's going to get really exposed. So, like I said, 70% of Congress will be gone. I guess that's the ones that was in there then. And some of them have already left. Uh, they talked about, I talked about the uh, military going to do tribunals and executions. Well, Mr. McCain, he had a tribunal and he was executed. George Bush Sr., he had a tribunal and he was executed. These are things I called out six years ago, over six years ago, two months, two months after Mr. Trump was in office. That's about the time period. This stuff all just come out of my mouth. Had nothing to do with him. This just all come out of my mouth. Uh, I, don't know, I, I hope I haven't mentioned it because I really don't want to, but there's one one particular person get called out to be executed as a public execution. Uh, look forward to that because I don't know who it is. I, I know who it is, but I can't. I don't want to bring it out. It just rubs too many people the wrong way. But anyway, these are things I call out. These are call outs that I do. Now, my latest call out has nothing to do with any of this. It's happened since that one. And these call outs are really weird. Like they just come out of my mouth and it might not even be a conversation about it or nothing. And I'm walking through the uh, living room after I took a shower and Sharon's sitting over on the chair and I said, do you know we're going to be Canada? What the hell am I saying? We're going to be Canada. This is a call out. Look forward to it for whatever it's worth. Something's got to do with Canada and us. I don't know what it is. We're going to find out. 27 years ago, I done a call out. I was in the middle of a conversation, I think. I remember right. You know, this country's going to go lawless. Had nothing to do with the conversation I was in. Well, the country's went lawless. Look at all these riots and everything's going on around the country. Look at the corruption going on. The country's went lawless. I called this out 20 some years ago. Uh, what else did I call out? I've called out a lot of things over the years. Uh, when I was uh, probably 21, 22 years old, like 50 some years ago. Uh, do you know there are seven different aliens in our in our world? I was in a conversation when that jumped out of my mouth. Had nothing to do with the conversation. You know, you know there's seven different aliens in our world. Some some people used to look at me real kind of say, "What the hell are you talking about?" That's these call outs that I do. Now a lady sent me a comment. She named this as being. A thing called channeling. I don't know what none of this stuff is, but she called it channeling. Okay. Uh, I don't know where these things come from. Come from God? Devil? I don't know. They all seem to be on the good side of things. I'd say they come from God. When the lady next door was the religious lady comes tell me I have a gift, I'd be more happy to believe it come from God. But uh, this ain't, I don't know how to explain this. This ain't for me to get recognition. I don't really care about that. I don't care about recognition for the foots other than the fact that I want the name, the words to be out about the foots. Why did I use my name and just call myself Joe Blow? Because I'm telling everybody the facts that I'm putting up with. I will put my name out there and what I'm saying. I will take a polygraph test about anything I've said. Why this is so important is... I don't know what I'm going to call out next. You know, I called out all this stuff going on right now with the government while Trump was in office. That was I think, probably six, seven years, six years. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, sometime I might call out something that's even closer. I called out the lawlessness of the country 20-some years ago, long before it was ever thought of, but it was it come out of my mouth. Then it happens. 
uh, it's just like the alien thing. I called out the senator. Aliens are out here. All the information started to come out about the aliens. I called this out 50 years ago. Things hit me like that. I don't know why. Uh, like I said, I'm not wanting to just be getting the recognition. You know, like I don't get any money for doing anything for the foots. I don't want no money for doing this. I'm doing this for them and for you. I want you to know what they're really about. Steve made a comment on his show one time. Steve from How to Hunt made a comment on his show one time. He said, if we ever had a war with the foots, we would lose. Well, I know what powers they have. I know it'd be hard to compete with. <laughs> we don't have much chance of winning that, that, that war. There's a lot more of them than people think. They're connected really well. As like I said, Alabama knows who I am. The UK knows who I am. They communicate like that. You think they couldn't all get together and snap themselves together and get in one spot if they had to be? Oh, yeah. So what I'm trying to tell everybody is, I don't know what else Edgar's going to get from them, but they are coming out. I hope I live to see it because I'm on good terms with them. I don't have a problem with it. You know, like I said, they can do whatever they want out of my house. You know, that's their property. I just happen to legally own it. They are, they were here long before us. Like I told you, Edgar, Edgar asked him uh, how long they've been there. And he says, well, as long as you have. Kind of an evasive answer to the question. Well, I was told by not asking any questions, I was told the aliens brought them here. The aliens thousands of years ago came here to mine the gold out of our land for something to do with the environment of their land they took a lot of our gold if it was on ancient aliens one time gold mines they found them thousands of feet deep thousands of years old so they brought the foots here to protect them from the dinosaurs while they were mining the gold you won't hear that from nobody else. But you didn't tell Edgar that. So that tell you how long they've been here. And they were here before us, and that's why they want to be known as the first people. I think we all need to respect that. You know, we're all in a bad habit of calling them Sasquatch, Bigfoot, uh, Sabe, and whatever else the Indians got names for them. <laughs> they are the first people. Me and Sharon have our tiffs about that because she's into the Bible stuff I'm just knowing what I was told while down in Kentucky looking into what they call they call the big bone lip not as a tar pit I guess we had dinosaurs down and they, they put a uh, museum up and all that there when I went over and looked down that pit Sharon was sitting on the bench because she wasn't feeling good I went over I'm looking in that pit and the foot started bringing it into me, which this is how they communicate with me. They give me their thoughts. They come right into my head. The Indians talk about that. That's what indigenous people will talk about. That's more of a superior type connection with them. Sharon, Sharon has the ability to mind speak. She can have, she can said a lot of mind speak with what we call qual. Anyway, uh, they come into my head and told me. This is what they did. They came here with the aliens to protect them from them dinosaurs. That me looking down the dinosaur pits, what brought that conversation up? So I'm like, oh boy. You know, so I'm telling people about it. Telling you why they were here, how they got here. Nobody really knows that, but they all speculate. I'm not speculating. I'm going with what they tell me. I've never had the foots lie to me yet. I never. I don't lie to them. That ain't happening. I can't. I couldn't lie to them. You know, everything's in my head. But I don't lie anyway. That's just, you know, in my opinion, you get caught lying, you're an asshole. So I just don't lie. But the bottom line of it is, uh, if we, they, if they come out like I'm thinking it's going to come out, the way they're letting me know, this is the resolve. 
This is the resolve. All the corruption in the world is getting canceled out. All these other countries, they're fighting the corruption. We're fighting the corruption. Some of these countries are ready to have overthrown governments and other stuff going on because of the corruption. Uh, the whole bunch of uh, MS-13 people been locked up down in Ecuador someplace. I don't know where it was at. But one of the countries down there just locked up, built special prisons to lock up the MS-13 people. And that's not a good plan. They aren't good. So they've locked them up down there. Uh, there's a lot going on right now. This is the resolve that I've talked about. It's happening now. How far it has to go before the foots come out, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to last, but that's what we're doing. Edgar also, Edgar brought up, I hate switching back and forth, but my mind has to flip a little bit to get this together. Edgar uh, brought up the fact of the uh, aliens, uh, Bigfoot tied up with the aliens. And like I said, I have rebellion, the rebellious aliens that don't want to deal with the, with the aliens, and I have the, there's the other ones that do. I think the other ones that do are the ones that are more troublesome to us. That's just my thought. Aliens oriented ones are the troublesome ones. The rebellious ones, they are fascinated watching us do things. They sit out in the woods and if you had a big construction site with, with big tractors going and big big trucks going, they sit out in the woods and watch. They like that. That Like Edgar told, Edgar even told you the same thing that uh, Patty Rowe told you. The same thing I tell everybody I hand my card to almost. I can have one standing right here and you wouldn't know it. That's a fact. They have the ability to cloak themselves. You don't have to see them. They can disappear right in front of you. This is the ability that they have. They have abilities to know your mind. If you walk into a, a 40 acre area, and that's their area. If you're on the other side and they're over here, you walk in. Oh, hi, how you doing? They know you're there. Steve talked about scientists uh, 1,400 meters away. They were behind a little candle-powered light in behind cardboard or something, whatever they was doing. And they were watching one of the first people out there way off. They could see him. And According to Steve, the scientist went like that. He turned his head. It's a long ways off. But they know you're there. They know your thoughts. If you encounter one in the in the woods, he knows what you're thinking. And this is why I tell everybody, get good thoughts. They know what's on your mind. I can't tell you don't take weapons to woods. There's animals that are, are need weapons. Uh, but you have to, if you got weapons with you, you have to let the foot know this is not for you. This is not for you. You know, let them know you ain't gonna harm them, show them respect. Uh, yeah, I wish I knew what I get lost in all my thoughts sometimes. Uh, it's because the head goes around 300 mile an hour. But the bottom line of all this is they're going to come out and it's only going to be as good or as bad as we make it. You know, we're not going to stop it. I'm quite sure of that. You know, I had I had, to pour, I had a portal right there at my house. I've talked about this before. I had the portal right there. There's other critters that come through that portal. Uh, I watched a, like a three and a half, four foot tall, one winged chicken one time. I come home, rolled up in the car, and the sheriff says, What's that? And I looked, I jumped out of the car, and I'm on to chase this thing down. Couldn't catch it, and it got her by where the portal was at, and then that was it. I couldn't find it anymore. It was gone. It, was, it wasn't a little, wasn't a little chicken. It's big. Something ain't going to hide that easy out there. <clears throat> but he got the portal gone, which is good. But which is bad because it tells me other things come through that portal. House down the road from me, the guy moved out of his house over this one. 
he had he had the foots on the back of his property. He had them for quite a while. And he knew it. They didn't bother him, but he knew they were there. They used to come up and shake his fence and stuff like that. Nothing harmful. Then one day, on his front porch, this critter come walking up about my height. They ain't very tall. Big head, huge teeth hanging out of its mouth. Walked over, looked at him, growled at him. Gave him dirty looks and growled at him. He left. I happened to see him the day before he left. The next day I went to see him, he was gone. Left his furniture, his house, left everything and got out of town. He didn't want no more to do with it. That, no doubt, come out of my portal. Now, i never seen it. But it ain't normal to be around. That, that funny-looking chicken thing ain't no normal to be around. What else comes out there, I don't know. I'm questioning myself about where the dog man comes in with this. I do not know. What got me arrested in a dog man was I did a video with my back background being my my, my woods. Well, after I did that video, I got comments, and two people sent me comments. Hey, you know you had dog man behind you? I don't know how they seen it. I had my buddy Jack look at the videos, and he couldn't see it, and he's into the dog man real heavy. He didn't see it, and he's pretty good on them videos. Then I had somebody else say it one other time, too. You know, if it, you got a bunch of dog men behind you. I don't know how they pick this stuff out. But when two people at the same time on the same video say the same thing, I got to believe it. So that's when I started getting inquisitive to Jack. Hey, well, where can we find these guys? I want to know why they're here. Uh, Jack knows where they're about. And he avoids it if he has to. He had a friend that lived there. His friend knows all about him. But anyway, I'm doing all this, being inquisitive to Jack to, to tell me what, you know, what we can is, well, well, we'll go out there. Okay, so we're trying to plan a time, me and him, get our schedule together to go out there. Well, before that would happen, I come out of the door, out my front door, I'm telling you very often, I come out my front door, I hear a puppy whining off, off to my left in the woods over there. Then I hear a puppy whining over here. I'm like, that, you yeah, ain't got no puppies running around here like that. Any puppies would be out there looking for food, coming up the house, doing whatever. That's one of the signs of the dog man. The dog man will do the puppy whine to get you to come to him or something. Well, that's why they done too. They didn't want me to come to him, but they wanted to let me know they were there. So one whined and the other one whined. So which way do I go? Nowhere. I just stayed right here. Okay. So I talked to Jack and asked him, and he said, yeah, that's what they do. They do that puppy whine. So, okay. So, my thought is, because Jack's got, Jack has documentation from people that own that land where the, where the dog man is. They have documentation hundreds of years back of the Bigfoot and the dog man on that property together. So, it's my thought that My first people have let the dog man know that I'm wanting to know what they're about. So they showed up there that night. Now, I know they were there. I've been inquisitive about it. I don't know why they were there the first time. Other than the fact that maybe the foots have let them know about me and they wanted to find out. I don't know. But I was going to go check them out if they hadn't come back. So eventually I'll get more, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know if you hear that thunder, a lot of thunder's going to rain. Anyway, I keep them in mind. I haven't figured out where they came from. You know, that tells me that there's a dog man and there's werewolves. Which werewolves have been talked about for hundreds of years. Jack says there's a difference in them. Okay, I'll go along with that. I don't know where neither of them come from. The uh, skinwalker thing, that's something I, I know a little about. Although, I'm still trying to get my video together. I got a video camera recorder. 
that should have some kind of an alien looking thing, maybe like a skinwalker or something, I don't know, caught on a camera. My cameras were running, my one's out of my house. We come home in the car, and Sharon says, what's that? And I didn't look up quick enough to see it and ran across the yard. Well, it ran right in where the view of the camera was. So I went in, I tried to get it up there. And I, I didn't, I don't know the code to get into my own recorder. I never got into it all the time I've had it. I had to replace an old one with a new one. I never set it up, the video, the code. And, so I didn't know how to get into it. So now I got to have somebody help me get into it or find a way to crack the code. And as usual, I'm really short on time. I don't have a lot of time to just run around and do all this, but I still got the video. It's on the tape somewhere. Hopefully it shows up. Hopefully it's not one of the things that won't show up on tape. I don't know. But this so it's transparent looking, and she said it looked like looked like it was made out of uh, rice checks, one little tiny square stuff. She said that's that's what it looks like it was made out of. But it was a human form, you know. But anyway, I will get that somehow. If I have to have to destroy the, the recorder to get that off here, I will eventually do that. I'm trying to hold off on because I, I want to put a recorder back in my house. Once I learn how to hit the little buttons and, and how to use it. So, anyway, them's the latest things going on. Uh... I hope you all check your notification buttons. Hit the yes buttons for me. I've never really asked anybody to do that, but hit the yes buttons. That helps me get more out there. And it's not, like I said, I wouldn't even put my name to this. It, it's not for me. This is not for me. This is for the foots and you to understand what they're about. Now I have to throw in the part about my gift that I didn't know I had until I was 68 years old. A woman had to tell me that I had to stop look at my, my life in the back, in the past way. And I, yeah, I used to call things out. What the, what? You know, so, sometimes I do that. And people just look at me like, are you stupid? Things would come out of my mouth that didn't pertain to nothing at the time. Later, they probably did. And I know some. I know a lot of them did. There's probably times I've called things out. I don't even didn't think about it. But that was my life. That's the way life was. I didn't have a gift. I didn't know nothing. I'm starting to learn a lot about my life right now. I just I just got in contact with my uncle, my uncle Ronnie. I haven't probably talked to him since about 1985 or something like that. 86, 85 probably. I've been about the last time. 84, 85, something like that. Is when I talked to him last, I think. And he's moved all around, and I didn't get to get with him. And he's, <laughs> it's really funny, he's only 19 miles from Lanita Bryant. So I'm planning a little trip down to Uncle Ronnie's, and I'll try to go down to see Lanita and meet her clan, ones that seem to know who I am. I'll try to go down there and meet with them. Uh, those are my plans of the somewhat immediate future if nothing goes wrong. Uh, my uncle holds up. He's 80. If he holds up, he's still around. And I hold up. I'm still around. We'll get something together and get down there. We've got some fun times to talk about. He used to tell people about things going on in our family, and they didn't even believe him. I told you I had a wild life. Started as a child. Things went on in my family. Just didn't happen in other families. But my uncle knows about it. And I'll tell you something really funny. I knew my uncle way back when he got drafted and he went to service. I always thought he, he was in Germany. He was in Vietnam and I didn't know it. So just recently when he told me, when he just contacted me, did not know he was in Vietnam. That's a sore place with me because I didn't get to go. I lost a lot of friends over there. I couldn't pass physical at the time because I had a back injury. So... Kind of wild. Things like that affect you sometimes different different than other people. I don't know. But anyway, I guess I've done talk long, took enough of your time. But uh, check your notification, notification, give me a yes up and all that. And 
Uh, I'll be getting back with you. I want to see what Steve comes up with with Edgar and what's being said with that. and See if I can use any of that stuff to verify what I do or I can verify what he's doing. Because I do know a lot. So let's give me a lot. And like the owl man. The owl man, he has conversations with him and, and communications with him. <coughs> he's made a statement. That he don't know if they're telling him the truth when he talks to him. It's because he has questions. I don't ask questions. They want me to know, they'll tell me. And if they tell me, why would they lie? Why would he just make up a lie? No, they tell me the truth. They tell me the facts. And I'm not going to lie to me. You ask questions, they tell you anything, I guess. I don't know. I don't ask questions. I've never asked questions. I've never really asked for no help. I've had got a lot of help from them, a lot of different stuff. But I've never asked no questions of them. I'm just glad they're around. We can be good neighbors and get along good. And I hope this is the way everybody sees to do when they come out because nobody's going to whip them. Nobody's going to destroy them. And God help us if they ever want to start a war with us over some of the humans' dumb shit. Humans want to start a war with them. It's not going to be good. But like I said, I called it out. When this resolve is over, everything will be good. So please, pay heed to what I tell you. You run across the foots in your life. Respect them. Don't have no ill will for them. And don't try to hurt one. The, the dog man, I don't know about him. I can't say nothing about him other than the fact that he does do damage. They, they've been known to take people out, but I don't know what that was about. You know, they're not, they're not the same, same mental attitudes as what our friends, the first people have. So, all right, well, I'm going to get off here. Take up enough of your time. Uh, send me comments, see what you got to say about, you know, what you think, what I'm saying. Cause like I said, I ain't got no reason to lie. I just hope everybody pays heed to what I'm saying. All right. I will see y'all later in the next video. How soon? I don't know, but I hope soon. See you later. Bye.